Hey everybody, welcome back to Kevin's One Stop Shop where no job's too big or too small. So I'm trying to finish up the Georgia Bulldog room. And now we're going to replace the carpet. And what I'm going to do is tear this carpet out. And then I'm going to take the new carpet and I'm going to lay it face down. And then I'm going to take this piece of carpet, lay it face down on the back of the new piece of carpet. And then I'm going to trace out the pattern and bring it back in here and then kick it up. So rather than bringing a big old whole piece of carpet in here and trying to trim it for that offset wall and for the closet here that's not got a seam, I'm going to use this as a pattern to uh to make it a little bit easier to put down when i get to um and um the only thing that i would say is is make sure if you're gonna lay the new piece of carpet face down the old pattern goes face down um if you leave the new carpet face up then you will need to use the old carpet pattern face up if you do one face down and one face up, it's not gonna work. So remember, the new carpet is gonna go face down, and then I'm gonna take the old piece of carpet and lay it face down on the back of it because it's easier to cut from the backing side as far as I'm concerned. So you're gonna need to make sure you got a pretty good space to be able to make the pattern. Um, I moved some stuff out of the dining room and kitchen to give me a big enough area. So I'm going to go ahead and roll the piece of carpet out and get back with you in a second. Okay, so we got the carpet laying face down. The backing is up, so the carpet's face down. And we're going to take the old piece of carpet, use it as a pattern, lay it face down, trace out the pattern with a Sharpie, and cut it. So you can see the whole thing's laid out face down. Okay, so now we've got the, you can see the new piece of carpet's face down on the bottom. And I've got the old piece of carpet on top. So like I said before, the new carpet's face down. And now the old carpet is face down. So then that will ensure that the pattern matches. The air conditioning vent hole there, I'm not going to cut it out because when I kick the carpet up, if it's just a little bit skewed, then I don't want to have that vent hole not lining up. So once I get the carpet down, I'll then cut that vent hole. But I've made sure that the bottom new piece of carpet is just a tad bit longer all the way around. All the way around. And so I'm going to take a Sharpie and trace that out. And then once I trace that out, I'm going to probably cut just a little bit larger than the pattern just to ensure I got a little wiggle room in case something's different. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and get back with you. Okay, so here's the new carpet already cut. And you can see where I traced it out. And I made sure I leave, left, well, I lined this one edge up with the factory edge so I wouldn't have to cut. But you can see anywhere that I cut, I left a little bit of the Sharpie. Just to make sure I give myself a little room so I can trim. So you'll see all the way around, I left a little bit of extra. So... And then I'll cut the vent hole later on. Okay, so what I've done is I've gotten this carpet in the room. And I've tried to make sure that it's the same amount of extra all the way around the whole room. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of extra everywhere you look. And that's what I was saying before. You want to make sure it's going to make it a little bit aggravating because you're going to have to trim it. If you've got one of those carpet trimmers that runs along the baseboard, that would make it a lot easier. 
but I don't have that. I'm just going to have to cut it with a razor blade. But what I've decided to do was that long wall on the front, I'm going to go ahead and get that wall kicked up and tucked in. And then what I'll do is I'll work my way across the room into that closet. But before you start trimming, you want to make dang sure that everywhere has a little bit of extra evenly all the way around. Because if not, you get to fine tuning it in one corner. And then when you get to the other side of the wall, you're going to find out that you're going to have issues in that opening or in some other places. But just make sure, triple check, that there's a little bit of extra everywhere that will allow you enough to trim. One thing you got to be careful about in this doorway is if you was to have the carpet kick too far towards the front of the house, then if this barely reached, let's say that you had it kicked too far that way and, the, and you trim this side, you'd have a gap here. Or let's say that you have the carpet kicked too far that way and you trim a little here, then you fold the carpet in the closet and flap it right there. Now you're going to have a gap over there. I'd rather have the gap in the closet if I was going to have to have one, but I don't want one either way. So anyway, I'm going to start trying to kick the carpet up and um, trim as I go. All right, so here's the completed project. Carpet's down. Doors are back up. And it went pretty good. Hope this helps y'all out some. Maybe it will, but uh, I figured I would take a few minutes to make a video. Somebody might get something out of, but uh, y'all have a good day and I'll see y'all the next time.